Bonjour. Welcome to Les Sur Boc in Paris. This is the heart of French rugby. Great to have you joining us on the programme today. It is a little bit chilly. The temperature has dropped what feels like about 20 degrees in, I think, 48 hours. But it wasn't an icy weekend. It was a red hot weekend of quarterfinal rugby action. Mills Mulliana, Jeff Wilson, Sir John Kerwin. I mean, your initial thoughts on what we've seen. Some are saying the two greatest ever quarterfinal games at a Rugby World Cup, JK. Yeah, well, for me, the, the All Black game was unbelievable. Obviously, um, you know, Argentina getting up against Wales as well, that was, that was an incredible game. But emotionally, the All Black game for me was incredible. And then last night, seeing France go out, I was sort of sad. I was sort of hoping for a France All Black final, to be fair, although we've still got a bit to go. But the standard of, of rugby has certainly gone up a level, so... I'm so glad they didn't have a camera on us in the last three minutes. Oh, I did. They got Mills, Nisbo. I was watching. Oh, yeah, it was unbelievable. Let's, let's be honest. The fact that a week ago we, we weren't sure whether we'd be sitting here talking about the fact that the All Blacks are still alive in a remarkable game. And also, when you look at the, the, the France-South Africa matchup, you know, one point um, in it, right down to the wire Mills. When you talk about what we expected going to this Rugby World Cup, it actually came to fruition. It came alive, the fact that I think both games stood up and then now we look forward to another fantastic weekend coming up. Well, we're a little bit unsure. It had everything, didn't it? I mean, that whole week, the build-up, the emotion you're, you're talking mm. about, JK. I mean, um, you know, even during those last sort of you know, couple of minutes, you know, the impartialness went out the window, didn't it? I mean, we, a little we, bit. We were there. I mean, we, in terms of we wanted, of course, we want the All Blacks to win, but the game in itself on Friday was probably uh, the best game I've ever witnessed in my li lifetime. Mm. Um, but then I'm, I'm like you. I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad that, um, well, I am really sad that, that, that France are out because it would have been a massive, um, I suppose, great for the game. Mm. And their fans have been fantastic if they went all the way through. Quarterfinals cruel. Yeah. That, and that's the big thing. Like, I think if you come to the World Cup, and the worst game in the world you'll ever play, and I've played one, is third and fourth. But at least you're there to the end. At least you're in the top four. But the quarterfinals are so gutting for France to go home or South Africa or, who, you know, and for Ireland, who have really been setting the standard. I think that is a surprise. I mean, the one thing I don't want to hear anymore is Southern, and you'll, you'll talk about this, and I'm just going to shut you down straight away, <laughs> is Southern Hemisphere versus Northern Hemisphere. It is, though. It is, though. It's, it's not. It's World Cup, man. Yeah. It's World Cup. It's World Cup. You cannot say Southern Hemisphere is better, Northern Hemisphere is better which Sir Clive did, right? Um, because you cannot, you cannot prepare for World Cups. I mean, Ireland have now gone from a monkey to a gorilla, like we had after 87, and it's just a unique tournament that you can't yeah. prepare for. Well, Oliver Magnay's comments in age well, right? If we're talking about comments, remember what he said earlier in the season? The 2023 All Blacks are the weakest in history. We have to give so much credit to Ian Foster, his coaching team, to Sam Kane and this All Blacks side mills. Yeah. They're no longer flying it under the radar oh, at this World Cup. No way are they. And I think a certain amount of Kiwis will be feeling that. I think their anxiousness of sort of... They were a little bit divided in terms of the support. I mean, yeah, whilst they love the All Blacks to win, they're still sort of hesitant in some ways, given everything that's happened over the last 18 months with the coaching debacle, um, you know, NZRU sort of decisions. It's now almost, it's brought the country together once again. You know, the fact that they won, they go out there and, and win like the way they've done in a massive game, this is now sort of, the country's really excited, and we, we are all but, excited about it. Yeah, but I think all of a sudden the All Blacks have proved to themselves that they aren't good enough to win this Rugby World Cup. They would have still come into this tournament not knowing. You needed to put a performance on the board. They've now done that. I couldn't disagree more. This is North versus South. This will always be North versus South because we play the game differently. We approach the game differently in so many different ways, and we I don't get to play do. each other. You were going to say Yeah, that. well, you started it. And I'm going to say, look, this say. is, but, but this it's is World Cup. No, it might be World Cup, but it's always a battle of styles, regardless of who's playing. And we've seen some styles change. We saw South Africa make some shifts against France. They tried to play a little bit more expensively. They did some things really, really well. But, but ultimately, for us and for me, you know, the All Blacks are now well and truly in the conversation. But it's a matter of they've just given themselves an opportunity. That's all they've done. They've got themselves started. At what they can do from here, they've got. Not just maybe one week, two weeks, but they've got to focus on what comes against Argentina. Well, you know, what is resilience? What is, what is adversity? And I think part of the problem between 80, and I keep going back to this, between 87 and 211 was that we won everything in between. This particular team has been through the adversity mm. 18 months ago. And so you either break up 
or you come together. And this group's come together. They've made some really big changes. I was so, so happy for um, Sam Kane. Yes. You know, he's been, he's had a horrible year, if you think about consistency of getting on the field. Injured during super, gets a knock early. And he comes out and has that performance. When I saw him walk off, he could hardly walk off. He'd left everything on, on, the, on that stage. And when you get the satisfaction of Richie McCaw coming out and saying, you know, that was an amazing performance. But I think the adversity has brought this team together. They now have a style of rugby which we can all understand. Um, I think their discipline, and this is from losing to, to, to Ireland last year, their discipline around defence. I mean, are the refs just not refing in the last five minutes? Or were the, were the All Blacks amazing for 40 rucks? Probably a combination of the two, right? I've noticed once again that the refs are sort of not picking up stuff in the last five minutes and I sort of get that because it's a big moment right well this wouldn't be a breakdown without you attacking the officials in some way and without you two uh, agreeing and disagreeing about something grab your cup of tea ladies and gentlemen because the show is just getting started and if you think your heart rate and your pulses come back down to normal we're going to take it right back up again and relive that test match between Ireland not Ireland between yes Ireland Ireland and the All Blacks the Irish are describing this match as one of the most important in their rugby history, while the All Blacks are looking to reach the semi-finals for the ninth time in World Cup since 1987. It's the long-awaited, much-anticipated Rugby World Cup quarter-final between Ireland and New Zealand from Stade de France here in Paris. Sees a little gap, Richie Monga. Goes up. Will oh. Jordan! What a try that is! Looking dangerous. Oh, penalty oh. try. He's and taking out the yellow card. Oh, how did they get under that ball? Oh, look at that, his legs. Great strength. Well into injury time here. Carried on by oh, Kevin. I think part of the satisfaction after that test match for the All Blacks, for fans, uh, for players and for former players like yourselves was the fact that no one expected the All Blacks to win this game except probably those in that environment, right? Their backs were against the wall. When that happens, Mills, I mean, do you get the sort of performance that we saw, that reaction from the team? When, how does this test compare to, to ones we've seen in the past where the All Blacks have been the underdogs going into a test match? Oh, this is a little bit different, though, isn't it, in terms of where this team has sort of come from? Um, and that's why it makes it even more special. The fact that it, it could take you either, you know, together, which, which it has, these guys, but can also take you the other way, where uh, sometimes you just go, well, it, it's all right, just to, this is, we were in this place again, we're going to lose again. And that's what we didn't see. And that's what makes that last sort of, you know, three or four minutes of 30 or 50,000 sort of rucks <laughs> um, so satisfying. Because at any point of time, those guys could have said, well, hey, we'll give away a penalty, we won't stay connected. But they believe, they stayed within it. Um, and so you've got to take your head off to the, the, the belief within that environment, because you're right. For many of our supporters, they would have just thought, well, here we go again, you know, yeah. we're going to lose a, a close one. Some games can be won on heart and effort, and that's what Aaron Smith talked about, some of yeah. the details to them. Yes, they got all the detail going in, but ultimately in the end, that was about performing under pressure, delivering under pressure. You talked about them coming together, going through that adversity. I look at this performance as one of the best I've seen from the All Blacks in my recent history, because being there firsthand and recognising what they had to go through, particularly after last year, all that adversity, and then all of a sudden there was all these pressure points, and it all added up. There was a steal to Artie Savea when I spoke to him after the game, when I mentioned, were you motivated for this game? And he said, yeah, I was cashing checks tonight. Like, there was history here, and then all of a sudden, they just, well, I say, the hucker, was it disrespected? I'm not sure whether you'd say it was disrespected, but the fact the Irish fans decided they didn't want to listen to it, it was a matter of all of a sudden. I think there was a number of things that motivated this all-black team, and that helped get them across the line. When you're talking about one percenters, and you've got to go to the wall, go as far as you possibly need to, I think this was the game for the All Blacks in terms of mentally and physically everything came together to get themselves a win. Yeah, look, I, I, I don't think it can be just emotion, right? 
Um, that's a big. I think the motivation leading to the whistle. I think there was extra motivation after, you know, um, the Irish have been incredibly confident. Um, you know, there'd been some driving from the past, so yeah, that will get you to the whistle. But I think what was incredible about this side was Mills has always, already mentioned the defence, which was, which was outstanding. But it was actually the the leadership around the yellow cards. I mean, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. they didn't panic. Like they obviously had a plan for that, which you can't, which is hard to plan for. But the kicking game, the short kicking game for Moanga, you know, contesting the ball and coming away from you know 20 minutes without two players and, and still be in the game is pretty special. Um, you know, if you're Farrell and Sexton, why did you kick to the corners? You talk about this a lot, right? It's about taking your points. And they were so confident that they thought they could kick to the corners and score against the All Blacks. So that will come back to rue them. And like I said, a monkey turns into a gorilla. Get back to Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere. World Cup is a special moment and you've got to win those special moments. We talked about how big this game was. I think 2-11 was the biggest game in our history for a long, long time after a drought. The second biggest game, I think, was probably Foster's going to get the sack in South Africa, yeah, yes. right? Um, and then you go home on a quarterfinal. That is a big moment against the best in the world. So it, it's got to rank as up there. And then add the performance on that. You think about the 2011 World Cup. I mean, it was pretty, pretty defence oriented, but this is just a really good game. And we were in front the whole way. We, yeah. They were never in front of us on the scoreboard. They got close, we pulled away again. They got close, we pulled away again. And like you say, that ability to adapt and to recognise what we needed to do, because you don't know what positions you're going to get yellow cards in, in yeah. games. So how you adjust to where they come from and then what you will do. But I think we got performances from everyone who took the field. Everyone who got on there, you think about Anton Leonard Brown, oh. was playing on the left wing. And some of the work he did defensively, the, the, the territory that Rico Iwani had to cover in this, in this game. But ultimately, the All Blacks have now, they've given themselves, like I said, they've just given themselves an opportunity. That's all it is. They haven't actually won anything. They've won the right to play one more week. Mm. And I know from experience, and I've mm. been there, and I can talk in 1999, the fact the moment it can turn, it can go. Mm. And it happened to us against France mm. in a semi-final. If you're not on point, if you're not prepared, and I'm not saying this, this All Black team is that All Black team. But you have to make sure you do this week right. But that's that's all part of it, isn't it? That's the experience and the hurt. And you know, we've often sort of walked past, you know, some of the you know, Irish supporters, and you they go how pain the pain that they are feeling. The All Blacks have felt that for about 15 odd years because of that sort of stuff. You can't roll into a rugby world cup as being number one and expect to be able to to, to win it and be and be favourites. This is the, the, the hurt that we've been through when we lose quarterfinals, when we lose, you know, semifinals and finals, is that the fact that anyone can win on their day. And when, I suppose there was a little bit of that with the Irish that they possibly thought, you know, the the results from you know last year and they they go to the corners because you know, the All Blacks will fold. When you're coming to a knockout tournament, the mental side of things, and we 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 had a brief discussion about it before the game. Upstairs, if your mental prep hasn't been done before that game. It's, it's too late, and, and I feel that that's probably the edge that we had over them because all those factors, J.K., that you spoke about, they could have easily said, you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to us, we're, we're, but they stayed connected, but tactically they stayed connected because they understood their game plan and then the belief came into it, and that's part of the reason why they, they got themselves home. Who had a poor game? No one, no. right? When you, when you analyse the Irish, and I'm not going to talk about who I think didn't play or play well because that's unfair because they'll all be hurting, but I think there were two or three players in Ireland that didn't have their best games. Whereas I couldn't really fault anyone in the All Blacks. They were all on their game. And that's what it takes for World Cups. I just want to pick up on a comment that you made. Richie McCaw has come out uh, in defence of Sam Kane. We know that he's had a rough ride over the last couple of years as the leader of this All Blacks team. And he said that was one of the best games that Sam Kane has played in a black jersey. And that is inspiration for your team, isn't it, Mills? It's, it's huge. Like, we notice it as former players when they're not on the screen and the stuff that he's doing off, off the ball but then he also has to I suppose control the team mm -hmm. what he'd done on the weekend I'm so glad because it was actually in between that box you know that you know that you could actually see what he's doing influenced sort of the game he wasn't just out there and some other factors that people don't see unless they're at the ground 
you know, notice what he, what he does. But he went to another level, and he's been, you know, you know, there's lots of question marks whether he should be, um, you know, out there playing, whether he should be on the bench and coming off the bench. I don't know who said that. Yeah. Me, yeah, that yeah, was you. Me, I said it. Yeah. And the Bash brothers that they're now calling them. You wanted to bench Artie Savera a few months ago. <laughs> the Bash oh, brothers. Wait, hold on, hold on. I didn't say I wanted. I wasn't benching him. I was You're how, benching how, Artie how, three no, weeks in a row. No, yeah, and how much impact he could have? Well, he's well and truly out of this game, and I can I could admit no problem at all. He's proven at this Rugby World Cup he's a world class number eight. But that's been helped by the combination of Shannon Frizzell yes. and the work Sam Kane and Dalton Popoliti have been doing. But done. But but Sam Kane for me. Let's let's. I think we need to qualify some of this as the fact it was an outstanding performance. Part of the problem Sam has is he hasn't been able to get on the field consistently over the last yeah. two years. Yeah. Remembering what three years ago he was New Zealand's Rugby Player of the Year. He was the best All Black on show. And since then it's been littered with injury after injury, major injury, he's come back from it. This was just a reaffirming of the quality and class he, he does ha have. But, but once again, I think they pushed the buttons with Sam Kane. I think the whole group had their buttons pushed going into this one. And that's what Ireland had to and should have expected. They should have, they should have understood this is what they were going to face. We saw the best of Artie. We saw the Barretts be outstanding. Now they're all playing in the proper positions they should be playing in. What about the young props? I mean, how, how bright's the future at prop when yeah. we've got those four young men? Yeah. You know, but I'll, I'll say this, Ian Foster was very quick to say we've got six props who have been playing well. Yeah. Nepo Lalala, off the Tuanga Fussy. All of a sudden he had options to either pick experience or to pick the youth. I'll be interested to see what he does this week. If I can just come back to the, my Kane argument. My Kane argument wasn't he shouldn't play. Do you want to finish with him or not? Right? Because we didn't finish with them on the field, we finished with Dalton, which is fine. So that's another proof that we've got guys late like Dalton, probably um, his leadership of the Blues has helped, that came on, none of them lost their head, they all went well. But also the other interesting thing is we didn't actually use our bench. Yes. No. Did we? Besides the props, you had Damien McKenzie. And so that really poses the question, what do you do this week? Because this is, this is the banana peel, people. You Argentina's always take us there peel. too early, JK. And bearing in mind also, a player got left out because of protocols, you know. Yeah. So they had all that as well. His, his team got leaked really early, and so you know they just sort of added to the drama. And, and as I said, all that, those factors, you could easily, you know, motivation, individual motivation. You know, Sam Cam could have just gone out there and just played for himself because he wanted to prove something. They didn't. They were all on the same page and collective effort in terms of the game plan they had and also the belief. Okay, well, enough about the All Blacks for now. We'll go back to that in just a moment. But let's get some Irish reaction thanks to Rugby Pass. You just got to admire the All Blacks. Like, they did what they did. They, some of the tries were soft, but then some of the tries we scored were soft. So Did they beat us or did we beat ourselves? I, we, didn't, we didn't land the punch. There's two world-class teams going at the party of the final. They've done us proud. We won our group, beat South Africa, beat Scotland, but... Just please win it next time in Australia. That's all I have to say. In Ireland, we just can't have nice things. We can't. We can't. We can't. Well done, Johnny Sexton. Thank you for the last 10 plus years. Well done. You never replace Johnny. No. No. No more than you won't replace what we're after seeing there. It's just incredible. It was worth the ticket price. It was worth all the money. It was worth the hangovers. It was worth everything. The guy you got in, I, I know the boys are shook, but we're definitely shook. Sure. We'll be back for four years in Australia, all right? Not getting by the quarterfinal, but we'll be there. I'd say the French economy are upset because the Irish are going to be here for the next two weeks to spend money. So, ah, look. New Zealand will want to win it. They will win it. I think they'll win it. They didn't go all the way. They'll get a bit of momentum now from that. Yeah. If they play like that, no team's going to stop them. Ireland fans clearly devastated, just like the players will be. JK, um, you said you didn't want to get into any individuals uh, in this team, but this was the golden generation, right? This was the time. People were saying it is now or never for Ireland. That is eight quarterfinals and ultimately eight failures at Rugby World Cups for this nation. Yeah, well, it's, it's a tournament that you can't prepare for, right? And so when you can't prepare for it, it's going to go down to the wire and you need special moments and you actually need to have lived it. And so I keep saying it, your monkey turns into a gorilla. But didn't they live it four years ago? Didn't they live it in 2019 when we put how many... I don't think they were as good as they are now. Pretty much you go back and you look, it's the same group of players. It's just developed and had a, they've had this dominance. They go on a winning streak. If you go on a winning streak like they've been, you beat the All Blacks in New Zealand. I mean, surely you couldn't get any better prepared... Mm. When you're taking, you've taken on every challenge, you've won Six Nations. I mean, they, they weren't in a better position than they were in this tournament to go on and win it. Now, yes, 
the draw didn't suit. The fact they got a game that they probably didn't deserve in a quarter-final because of the, the, what they were up against. But they've missed their opportunity. The window has closed on this group. I don't see, without Jonathan Sexton going forward, Polly Pito Omani's another one who's probably not going to get there. You talk about experience. Arke. Those are the two most... Arke, Bundy yeah. Arke, who's been the standout yeah. performer yeah. for yeah. them in the midfield. Probably the standout midfield player in this tournament. So you think of it now, I think... It, and they'll be competitive going forward, don't get me wrong.